You will enjoy the video better on a large screen and will be able to stop it just by pushing the space bar. This Ollie course was marvelous and jam-packed with information. Dr. Dahlmeyer provided our class with excellent teaching materials. Any mistakes are mine. Three hundred and seventeen million million years old. Wow. First, we go to the northern sector to investigate characteristics in hydrodynamics of the salt marsh and meandering drainage. This area is mostly Holocene. This is one of the first places that we So the, the oysters are in nets, and how are they held down? Just the They're, weight of the oyster shell? No, actually, I think they put a snake in there to help them. Some of them were exposed, but then the ones yeah. lower down are growing on the bags. Yeah, it's and wonderful. Then we moved to the northeastern shore from the fishing pier to the north end of the seawall. The Georgia coast is tide dominated. I especially enjoy examining the effects of intense wave energy and looking at what I learn are heavy metal sediments. I always wondered what those dark streaks were. Where some of the time, some spume got isolated and then dried out. You see that pattern? Like so the dark is heavy, heavy mineral. That's Garnet and what? Ilmenite, iron titanium oxide. That's that's the really black stuff. Uh -huh. morning, and some some epidemics. Uh -huh. I showed you this in the lab. We could go.
the migrating of the islands has, has exposed it. And look over there now what we see. What do we see up over here? Marshmallow we trees? trees that died. Where does the sand come from on these barrier islands? Mostly quartz. It originates from rock in the Piedmont and Carolina arc terrains, transported by Georgia's river systems. So clearly that older sand's a different color. Mm -hmm. The mineralogy is about the same. The color is just a staining on the surface of the grains as brown, iron rich groundwater is percolating. Yeah. Oh. And they would fertilize it. They would get spartana and you know, stuff like that and amend the soil. But this is richer than <coughs> rich sand. 35,000 years old. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it's a bit of an anomaly in that we've got accretion, but then we also have undercutting and erosion. Wavy roof. Little crabs. No, not, not that far. Let's go back to twenty thousand. What do we know was happening 20,000 years ago? Wisconsin was just starting. Sec no, the second phase oh. of it was at its peak. And so then, then, as the ice melted, sea level rose. Mm -hmm. This is a tough game. Sea level rose quickly till about 5,000 years ago. And then, the, if this hadn't, if that inflection had not happened, we probably wouldn't have the buried islands as we know them. Or the mark. Uh, or the marsh, because this this slowed the rate of uplift, allowed the colonization of the islands, of vegetation, and stabilized them. Otherwise, they'd probably have accreted to the coast, and we wouldn't have any of this marsh and barrier island. But this, and so why did this happen? Why did this change in the rate of sea level? Who can tell me why this <coughs> change? It was rising so fast, pretty uniformly, until 5,000 years ago, and then the rate of sea level rise dropped off. The temperature still. What happened was that this was the time that most <laughs> of the low latitude ice had melted, and only high high latitude ice was left, and so it didn't it, it melted more slowly, and so the rate of sea level water to the basin changed, and so it flattened. Out. So it's really this is when most of the lower low to mid latitude ice was already gone.
decimal to say it is the positive. Ebb tidal delta. Right. Ebb tidal delta. This is where the beach came to in 1964. And now we cannot see exactly where the ocean is because it's way the heck over there.